This is that time 30 years ago when I learned the true meaning of what Memorial Day is all about in real time. Like many of you, I've attended field memorials in the past, too many, and even more since I took my boots off for the last time. I learned a long time ago that it's a very necessary part of the profession of arms to honor Memorial Day together and the power of healing that it can bring. And I learned it from one of the best in the business. He was bar none the most professional soldier I'd ever met. His starch was like Kevlar, crisp and with a knife's edge. His boots, pure glass. And yes, it was kiwi and cotton balls. He was the real deal. He was a command sergeant major, but not just any other CSM and the epitome of excellence. I know that may sound cliche, but it's true. And I really never use the term strack very loosely, but I'd use it freely regarding him. He would become the standard in my mind of what every true leader looked like and aspired to be. It was 1992, and when I met my former father-in-law, who happened to be our unit's soon-to-be retiring first sergeant, he was there. Talk about a pressure cooker. When we got married in my former in-law's home, along with my dad as my best man, he was there. And yes, when our oldest son Gary, now a sergeant, serving at Fort Drum was born, he was even there for that. He was also there when I returned home from the Horn of Africa, and I really do miss his pearls of wisdom. Our contingent arrived home around 0400 on Christmas morning. And a couple of days later, we eventually found ourselves over at the in-laws. Once again, the Sergeant Major was there. But this time was different. I had assumed that as they were the neighbors, they were there for supper as well. And as the only junior enlisted in the house, of course, I had assumed incorrectly. The Sergeant Major had recently returned from his unit taking an unscheduled block leave. As a young soldier, I was both in awe and incredibly blessed by his example, mentorship, and counsel. He really was a legend. And anybody who's ever met or served with him will tell you the exact same. He shook my hand and said, Welcome home, troop, in his ever consistent, soft spoken voice. He continued, my neighbor here tells me you're the only firefighter from Fort Campbell that went to Africa. I paused for a moment and said, Roger that, Sergeant Major. Still shaking my hand, he actually never let it go. He says, thanks to you and your guys for all the work on the ground over there. I was not expecting that. I was floored. That's when I felt my blood start to go cold. In hindsight... I know I probably shouldn't have, but I just simply didn't know how to react at the time. I immediately retracted, telling him that I did nothing compared to his guys over there. He cut me off, and now with a finger in my chest, he reminded me that the team takes everyone, and that every man on the ground is just as important as every man in the air. Everyone makes a difference. Even the fallen can teach us, drive us, and motivate us long after they're gone. End quote. Powerful words from a true silent professional. He reminded me of his unit's motto, Night Stalkers Don't Quit, and the unit's adopted Bible verse. It's Job 23.10, which tells us, The Lord knows the way I take, and when he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. He was the personification of leadership, and it was truly an honor to know him. He's the man that would later give me this coin, his coin, 
because he was Regimental Command Sergeant Major Bob Page of the 160th SOAR, the Night Stalkers, in 1993. And that blocked leave I mentioned earlier, that was no vacation. Sergeant Major Bob Page had just returned home as well. He had returned home from attending not one, but every single one of the 18 memorial services all over the country that were held after we got home. Every single one. Now that, my friends, is a leader. And that's how I learned the importance of Memorial Day in real time 30 years ago. Seven. Roger that. Next mission. Time now.